Hello everybody, my name is Megid, I'm one of the emergency doctors in Kettering General Hospital. I'm welcoming you in Kettering General Hospital ultrasound course, Eye Behind the Walls. In this lecture we are speaking about the abdominal pain assessment. First of all, we will start to speak about fast scan. Fast scan is an integral part of the primary survey in trauma patient. And right now, it starts to be moved from fast scan to free fluid assessment, so it can be used in a trauma patient and non-trauma patient. It's mainly operator dependent, so you need to be familiar how to do this as this scan adequately and how to avoid the misinterpretation. Typically, it takes two to five minutes, and fast scan is one of the valuable diagnostic which can be used and can be compared with the CT scan and diagnostic retinal lavage, despite CT scan is the gold standard investigation and evaluation of abdomen, abdomen in trauma patient, but ultrasound can be available and can be repeated and also can be cheap for you, so it can be in comparison with the CT scan and replacing the diagnostic retinal lavage. Fast scan is a protocol and each protocol is comprised of multiple views and in the classic fast scan we have four protocols. The first one is the right hepaturenal or right upper quadrant. The second will be the subxiphoid area. The third will be the left upper quadrant or lionurenal space and the fourth will be the pelvic assessment or suprapubic view. In the extended fast scan, which is more advanced than the fast scan or the classic fast scan, we already added another two views. So you can assess uh, apical for the patient on right and left side to assess for hemothorax. And in the hepatorenal and lionorenal space, you can also assess for the free fluid in the thorax of the patient on right side and left side. So you can detect hemothorax in context of trauma and pleural effusion in non-traumatic patient. This is the composition of the EFAST scan. So you have the right upper quadrant, the subsifoid, left upper quadrant, pelvic, which is compromised of two views, longitudinal and transverse section, beside the right lung assessment and left lung assessment. To perform the FAST scan, we are examining the abdomen, so we need a probe which have a good penetration power. So we can use the curvilinear probe and we can use also the phased array probe. This is a sagittal view and this is an axial view of the abdomen of the patient. And in this picture, you can see the peritoneal space. And if you can imagine here, if the patient is lying flat, so the free fluid will start to accumulate in this area. So this is the hepaturenal space or the right upper quadrant space and this is the lionurenal space or the left upper quadrant space and if you check over the sagittal section you can check if the patient start to accumulate fluid and he's in the supine position so mainly the most dependent area will be the hepaturenal space that's why the first view to check for a free fluid assessment in the patient it will be the right upper quadrant because if the patient start to accumulate free fluid, mostly it will be in this area, and this is the most dependent area for the patient when he is in the supine position. Focus is focus. So in each view, we need to ask ourselves a question, and we try to find an answer for this question. In the right upper quadrant, I'm having two questions. The first question is, do I have a free fluid in the right upper quadrant? And the second question, do I have a free fluid in the right thoracic space for this patient or not? To be able to answer this question, I need to get an adequate view. And to get an adequate view, you need to see the liver, and you need to see the right kidney, and you need to see the interface between the liver and the kidney, which is the Morrison pouch. To be able to do this, you need to start at the point which is the meeting point between an imaginary line transverse going through the ziphi sternum and meeting the mid-axillary uh, line 
and in this point if you put your probe you will be able to get this image to get an adequate view i need to see the liver and mainly the caudal end of the liver or the inferior border of the liver and see the right kidney and the interface in between and all the time try to remember that the picture you see on the ultrasound is just one millimeter in thickness so you need to manipulate your probe and start to do fanning of the probe to be able to scan the whole space and to answer your question if you can see a free fluid or not tips for right upper quadrant scan patient need to be in the supine position and to increase the sensitivity of the scan you can put the patient in the trend limbic position don't forget to scan the inferior pool of the kidney and when using the curvilinear probe the rib shadow sometimes can obscure part of the view for you and to avoid this you can do minimal rotation of the probe and making the footprint of the probe inside the space in between the ribs so you will get a better image sometimes you misdiagnose the perinephric fat as a free fluid collection and for this there is a very famous sign which is called double line sign and if you see here you can see that this white line and this white line this is the capsule of the liver and capsule of the kidney and you can see a triangle in between sometimes when the gain is less for this patient you may interpret this as a free fluid but this is the perinephric fat so when you see the double line sign this means that there is no free fluid collection in this patient in the right upper quadrant second view will be the subsifoid which will be discussed in the echo lecture so we are going to discuss the left upper quadrant the left upper quadrant it will be uh, the same like the right upper quadrant but to get a better view you need to see the spleen and to see the left kidney and the interface between the spleen and the kidney and to see the diaphragm in this view mostly when the fluid starts to accumulate it will accumulate subdiaphragmatic so the fluid will be in this space and after that it will start to accumulate between the spleen and the left kidney tips for the left upper quadrant space don't misdiagnose the stomach with a free fluid collection especially if the patient with a full stomach and you are facing up with the probe while assessing the left upper quadrant you can get the stomach inside the view but if you can see in the image the fluid collection inside the stomach is well circumscribed which is not matching with the free fluid collection going for the fourth view which is the suprapubic view and here we have a difference between male and female in males we will have the collection between the bladder and the rectum and in female it will be starting to accumulate between the uterus and the rectum in the cul-de-sac or douglas pouch and if the fluid start to be more and more it will start to surround the uterus and filling the space between the bladder and the uterus going for the male assessment in the longitudinal section we already agreed that we have a longitudinal section and transverse section starting with the longitudinal section so you are just above the symphysis pubis with the probe in the longitudinal position with the marker of the probe facing to the patient head so in this ultrasound view you can see this triangular space which will be the urinary bladder and the rectum will be there so i'm anticipating to find the free fluid collection in this space going for the female longitudinal section so i see this triangular shape which is the urinary bladder and this the structure of the uterus and behind will be the rectum so the free fluid will start to accumulate in this position going for the transverse section which will be nearly uh, similar between male and female so you will have the urinary bladder of the patient and the free fluid will start to accumulate in this area tips for suprapubic view females in childbearing period at ovulation time will have a physiological free fluid collection in the pelvic view don't misdiagnose the seminal vesicle in male with a free fluid collection and try to do the scan just before application of urinary catheter 
otherwise you will not be able to assess this view and finally when you are assessing the suprapubic view and assessing the urinary bladder you will find a posterior acoustic enhancement which means that the picture will be more bright just distal to the urinary bladder and this can make the evaluation of free fluid in this area difficult for you and to avoid this you can use the function of TGC or time gain compensation to adjust the gain in this sector so you will be able to assess a free fluid collection in this space and in this picture you can see the seminal vesicle which is two globular structure is found distal to the urinary bladder and it's filled with the semen so sometimes it can be misinterpreted with a free fluid collection in patients with evolution of classic fast scan and going to the extended fast so we added another focus question which is do the patient have a free fluid inside the pleural space or not and in the context of trauma is it hemothorax or not to able to do this we are going to scan the right upper quadrant and left upper quadrant but moving a little bit up to the patient head and looking for this sign the first one is the absence of mirror image and seeing the spine sign and seeing jellyfish sign this is the right upper quadrant and this white structure is the diaphragm and one of the artifacts which is commonly happen with in the ultrasound that in highly reflective surfaces just like the diaphragm sometimes we have an artifact called a mirror image and when you see over there this is supposed to be the plural space but if you focus more you will find this texture is equal to this texture so the diaphragm is acting like a mirror when you have this mirror this means that the lung over this area is normal and healthy lung so absence of mirror image is a pathological sign meaning that means that the pleural space containing fluid over there so we lost the mirror image with which is the normal finding in a healthy patient spine sign in a healthy patient you can see the spine shadow which is the white line over there and normally it's stopped with the meeting point with the diaphragm over there and it's obscured over this area by the lung tissue which is containing air and the air is dispersing all the ultrasound beams so you will not be able to see the spine sign just beyond the diaphragm if you start to see this this means that the lung is not there anymore and there is a free fluid collection in this area and you have a free fluid in this space even you don't see a free fluid collection over there which is the plaque collection in this area finally if you can see the jellyfish sign which is the collapsed lung loop which is moving inside the free fluid over there which is called the jellyfish sign okay so this means that you have a free fluid in this space in the trauma context it may it will be a hemothorax in uh, non trauma context it will be a plural effusion of the patient and finally the pitfalls of the e fast you cannot evaluate the retroperitoneal space collection and you cannot distinguish the solid organ injury you will fail to recognize the clotted blood and some of the difficulties you will face if the patient is morbidly obese or if the patient had a massive subcutaneous emphysema so you will not be able to penetrate beyond this emphysema and do an assessment for this patient to sum up in this view or in this protocol the efast scan we are asking ourselves three questions the first question is there any free fluid in the abdomen the second question will be is there any free fluid in the chest the third question is there any free fluid in the pericardium triple a assessment always remember that the aorta is not just the abdominal part we have the thoracic part and abdominal part so we have ascending arch of aorta descending aorta and after that the abdominal aorta mainly the ascending and arch and descending aorta can be assessed while you are doing the 
echo assessment for the patient or the point of care or, uh, echocardiography for the patient. Here we are going to speak about the abdominal part of the EO. In this view, the probe is in the subzephoid space in the transverse position and the marker is going to the right side of the patient. So if you see over there, you can see the shadow of the vertebral body and you can see two structures in front. The circular structure and mainly just in front of the vertebral body, this is the aorta, and the other structure which is a little bit compressed, which is the IVC and mainly to the right side of the vertebral body. You need to distinguish between aorta and IVC when doing the assessment. Aorta will be thick and echogenic wall. IVC will be with thin wall. Aorta will be pulse style, but IVC also, you can see pulse inside the IVC, and this is a transmission of the pulsation of the aorta itself. If you open the Doppler, so you will see a high flow velocity inside the aorta, and in the IVC, it will be a low flow velocity. If you do minimal compression with the probe over there, the aorta will not be compressible, but the IVC sometimes can be compressible. And in aorta, there is no respiratory variation, but in the IVC, when the patient starts to take a deep breath or step, the IVC will collapse or decrease in size. The aorta anatomically will be just above the vertebral body or in front of the vertebral body. The IVC will be to the right side of the vertebral body. On doing the assessment, I need to start in the transverse position and going from proximal to distal and after that going to assess the aorta in the longitudinal space. Starting the technique, you are starting in the subzephoid area, putting the probe in the epigastrium in the transverse position, and the marker is facing to the right side of the patient. And the first station for you is assessing the origin of the celiac axis. And in this position, you can see the seagull sign. So if you see over there, this is the aorta, and the celiac trunk is just gaining out of the aorta giving the two branches which resemble the wings of the seagull so the right side will be the hepatic artery and the left side will be the splenic artery moving distal okay and seeing the superior mesenteric artery so you can see the aorta over there and there is a small structure in front this is the superior mesenteric artery and this is called mental sign Going down till the bifurcation will be the third stage for you to see the bifurcation. And after finishing, you are going in the longitudinal position, checking for the aorta in this space. And here you can see the celiac trunk and the origin of the superior mesenteric just below the origin of the celiac trunk. And you need to assess the full length of the aorta. This is the superior mesenteric artery origin. And this is an ultrasound view, you can see here, this is the aorta and this is the celiac trunk and the superior mesenteric artery coming out of the aorta. Making your assessment for the aorta, if you are going to do the assessment in the longitudinal position, mostly you will get an inaccurate uh, assessment for the diameter of the aorta because if you are getting the beam in one of the sides of the aorta, you will get a false diameter and you need to put the probe and cutting the aorta in the midline, which will be difficult to do this, to get the true diameter. That's why on assessing the aorta, we need to assess the diameter of the aorta in the transverse position. And here you can see the aorta over there. And inside the aorta, you can see the true lumen of the aorta. And over there, you can see a mural thrombus. For assessment of the diameter and accurate assessment of the diameter, I need to assess from outer circles of the aorta to the outer circles of the aorta. So this will be the accurate measurement of aorta. Tips which will help you to do assessment of the aorta. Sometimes when you do the assessment, uh, the view will be obscured by the gas inside the intestine. So if you apply firm, constant pressure for sometimes, the in move with the movement of the intestine, the uh, intestine will start to move away from the probe, and you will be able to see the aorta after a while. 
The other step is to go with the probe to one of the sides of the patient. Okay, so you will try to avoid the intestine over there and the gas inside the intestine and start to do the assessment of the aorta. Mainly, if you go to the left side, you will be able to catch the aorta and able to do the assessment of the aorta. Finally, you need to ask yourself the question and the focus question here, do I have an aortic aneurysm? And the second question, is there any dissection or not? For the measurement, we speak about measurement from outer to outer, nor regarding the diameter, if it's more than three centimeter, this is abnormal, and more than five centimeter, it is rupture aneurysm until proof otherwise, and you need to check if there is any flap inside the lumen of the aorta moving over there so you have the possibility of dissection in this case remember aorta is not only the abdominal part we have also the thoracic part for assessing the ascending aorta you need to check the patient in the long barosternal long axis view and you can see the root of the aorta over there and do assessment of all the ascending part of the aorta Normal will be below 4 centimeters. If it's more than 4, four centimeters, this is abnormal. And if you can see a flap inside or not. For arch of aorta, you need a specific view, which is not uh, included inside the focus assessment, which is the suprasternal view, and you can check the arch of the aorta. And finally, the descending aorta, you need to check the patient in the parastin long axis or short axis and this globular structure in the descending aorta in transverse section when you are doing the parastin long axis view. And you can get the longitudinal section of the aorta if you are going to the parastin short axis view. For gallbladder assessment, we need to do gallbladder assessment in patient coming with the right upper quadrant pain complaining of colic abdominal pain or the patient have recurrent jaundice or the patient have tenderness in the right upper quadrant when you are doing an examination for the patient abdomen. The tips for you which will help you to get better view for this patient. If you put the patient in the left lateral decubitus position, so in this position you are able to get the liver down and getting the gallbladder away from the costal margin so you will be able to assess the gallbladder and if you ask the patient to take a deep breath and hold the breath so the diaphragm is pushing down the liver and getting the gallbladder away and free from the costal margin so you will be able to assess the gallbladder assessment of the content of the gallbladder after getting the view you need to assess if there is any gallbladder stone inside and to know that there is a gallbladder stone i see the stone inside and there is a posterior shadowing over there so this means that i have a gallbladder stone the sensitivity of ultrasound in assessing a gallbladder stone it will be from 96 up to 100 percent and it will be the gold standard investigation to be done for the patient and have an upper hand more than the ct and x-ray sometimes when you are doing the scan you are unable to see the gallbladder itself and see what's called double arc sign so if you check over there you will have two white lines over there and there is a posterior shadowing down so this means we have a, a large gallbladder stone or a multiple stone inside and the patient it just have a contracted gallbladder which is happening when the patient just have a meal before the scan Second assessment for you when are, you are doing an assessment for the gallbladder is to check for the CBD diameter or the common bile duct diameter. To be able to get the goal, uh, the common bile duct, you need to do the scan for the patient right upper quadrant and get getting this view, which resembles the exclamation mark. So it, this is the gallbladder and you can see a white band going and attach it to the portal vein and this white band is the median lobar fissure if you check over there normally we have the portal vein and above the portal vein we have the hepatic artery and the common bile duct on opening the doubler or over the this two structure you will be able to distinguish the hepatic artery from the common bile duct measuring the diameter of the common bile duct you need to measure from inner to inner 
and normally it is less than six millimeter in diameter and if the patient already done a cholecystectomy so the size can be rising up to one centimeter in this patient and here if you open the doubler over there and i can see this st structure running above the portal vein and it's not taking any color so this is the common bile duct i can do the assessment for the diameter of the gold bladder. my focus question in assessing of the gold bladder the first question is there any gold bladder stones and the second question do i have any sign for acute cholecystitis the sign for acute cholecystitis i need to have sonographic murphy sign or pericholecystic fluid or anterior wall thickening of the gold bladder or enlarged gold bladder the most specific sign for me will be the sonographic murphy sign so if it's present so the patient mostly have an acute cholecystitis sonographic murphy sign when you putting the probe in the right upper quadrant or just subcoaster for the patient and asking the patient to take a deep breath if the patient stop breathing suddenly because of the pain so this is a uh, resemble positive sonographic murphy sign pericholecystic fluid you will be able to see a free fluid around the gold bladder okay so this is the pericholecystic fluid and the assessment of the anterior wall you need to assess the thickness of the anterior wall normally it's up to three millimeter in the diameter if it is more than three millimeters so this is mean thickness of the anterior wall which is matching with cholecystitis for the patient renal assessment and renal assessment tips in assessment of the kidneys on both sides usually the kidneys is lying uh, inside the thoracic cage so if you ask the patient to take a deep in inspiration and hold his breath so i'm pushing down the diaphragm and try to get the kidneys uh, outside the thoracic cage so i will be able to assess the kidneys if you put the patient in the lateral decubitus so you will be able to assess the kidney fine and sometimes you can go for the posterior approach putting the probe on the posterior axillary line and you will be able to assess the kidney for examining the both kidneys it needs to be longitudinal and transverse plane and my focus question will be four c's and mainly we are focusing in the emergency setting on the assessing of the collecting system the four c's will be the contrast the contour the comparison which is mainly regarding the size or the volume of the kidneys and finally the collecting system regarding the contrast in normal renal echogenicity if you compare the liver and the kidney usually the liver is much more brighter than the kidney if you start to see them in the same texture so this means that the kidneys start to be diseased and i have a grade of nephropathy in this patient in this view you can see a chronic renal failure and here you can see the texture of the kidney is much more brighter than the liver so i'm considering nephropathy in this patient regarding the contour usually i can see a smooth surface of the kidney and dark area which is um, resembling the cortex of the kidney and the bright area which is the renal medulla if you see a well circumscribed uh, structure arising from the renal cortex this is the resembled cyst and sometimes you can see multiple cysts in patients with polycystic kidneys regarding the comparison of the size so the kidney and the diameters the length usually between 10 and 12 centimeters and the width will be between four and six centimeters if it's larger and mainly we are comparing the right and left side together for this patient collecting system in normal patients i will have the kidney the cortex and the medulla inside and the collecting system is potentially closed so there is no free fluid collection inside the renal pelvis if the patient have any obstruction the distal in the ureter or distal to the ureter so the urine will start to accumulate and it will start to distend the collecting system so you will start to see uh, an echoic 
cortical area inside the renal pelvis, which will be the first grade of hydronephrosis. And with, with time and more collection of urine, it will start to go from mild to severe. And you can see the collecting system here like a trifle. And here you can see it's looking like broccoli. Okay, and finally, it will start to distract the whole cortex and compressing over the cortex uh, of the patient. And this will be in the severe hydronephros. Finally, the assessment of kidneys with ultrasound, the sensitivity will be 80 to 94 and specificity will be 82 to 99. Thank you and see you in next lectures.